That right there is my second batch of pot ash. This stuff is not charcoal ash. You remember the color of that stuff I got out of the charcoal ash. It was almost like a bright green pea. This is from yard trash, essentially weeds that I pulled up and let dry and then I cooked them. They're supposed to be higher in potassium carbonates, so I actually did that on purpose. But they're a very funny color, as you can see. It's kind of amber. It doesn't appear to be going away as I evaporate, which the green did. So I think I'm going to wind up with a brown residue, which means I'm probably going to have to recrystallize. More. Wow, 273 grams. Now, it's obviously contaminated because it's brown. And uh, I don't think it's really dry. You know, apparently potassium carbonate is very hygroscopic. And I'm just not sure that I've got a true weight. Um, I am going to try cleaning it up. So what I'm going to do is add some of this uh, truly lovely powdered charcoal that I made in the ball mill. I don't have any activated carbon, um, but I've got this. So I'll just put some of that in there. I'll stir it around and let it, let it um, react for a bit and see if it will absorb that color. And then I'll filter it off reluctantly. So let's, uh, let's filter it off and see if I got anywhere. Well, look at that. I'm going to go with not so much. In fact, I'm going to go with that carbon actually might be causing me a problem. I might have gotten it more finely divided than I thought. It's a couple days later um, because what I essentially did was I made some activated charcoal, activated carbon, depends on what you want to call it. Of course, I got the recipe from da -da -da, YouTube. I will give you a link in the notes to a somewhat hyper-testosterone-y uh, video about the production of activated charcoal. I filtered this stuff through about four layers of coffee filters. This is that activated carbon that I made. Um, really didn't take the color out, which is too bad. I was really kind of hoping it would. It's a number of days after uh, I tried treating that potash with my homemade activated charcoal, which, as you might recall, didn't have much effect. There it is. I finally managed to dry it out. Let's see how much I have here. It's not, it's just really hard to get it totally dry. I think it sucks water right out of the air. It's just very kind of hygroscopic. So it's dry, but not totally dry. 257 grams. There's a little bit left in the in the pan, but I got most of it. So I could use it. Um, I could use it. I don't want to use it because it's so brown, but it is a thing. I'm going to try one other technique that I thought of. The cool thing about uh, potassium carbonate is that it's very soluble in water, but it's not very soluble in organic solvents. So I've had some acetone sort of marking time in the freezer. Let's see what happens if I drop some of this in there. I'm hoping that whatever the brown stuff is will dissolve in the acetone and leave me with nice white potassium carbonate. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to try ethanol because apparently potassium carbonate's not very soluble in ethanol either. So here's what happened when I uh, tried to extract that brown stuff with acetone. The acetone got cloudy. That's probably the water. Um, clearly uh, did not, well, maybe a little brown, but not very much. So there's my slightly murky solution of water with brown potash in it. Now, I wouldn't try this if acetone were incredibly cheap. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dump in a massive amount of acetone. 
on top of that water and see if I can essentially make the make the uh, stuff crash out of solution. I don't know what will happen. Probably nothing. If it doesn't work, I'll, uh, I'll try it with ethanol. Funny, I did not realize that acetone and alcohol were not miscible liquids. I don't know why I did not know that. Acetone and water, I mean. Somehow I felt like I should have known that. I feel like I should have known that. I do seem to be getting a little bit of an extraction, but it's uh, clearly not, uh, not pretty. I did that badly. I don't know anything about frickin' chemistry, obviously. So, you know, I'm no uh, Professor Proton or anything, but I thought I knew my solvents better than that. And it turns out that acetone and water are miscible. I guess it's just that acetone is not miscible with concentrated solutions of potassium carbonate. So my extraction removed about half the water and the potassium carbonate started precipitating out and I had to actually add more water in order to get it uh, get it back in solution. So I'm going to try ethanol. This is actually only about 95 percent ethanol. It's going to affect my yield, but I still want to see if I can turn my uh, I can turn my stuff um, white instead of brown. So let's see what happens. It did it again. It won't mix with that concentrated uh, potassium solution. Look, see that down there on the bottom in that something? And it's very dark brown. It's just that it's weird. It's just a weird, weird, weird reaction. Uh, that may be a crime against humanity, what I just did there. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to let those two uh, settle out for a while, and then I'm going to uh, decant off the ethanol. I'm going to let both of them evaporate and see what I'm left with. Um, I'm about ready to give up on this stuff, but I'm going to try one last thing, which is to try extracting with extracting it with a solvent which is just really different from water so I wouldn't do this if you're not in a well ventilated room let me tell you let's go ahead and uh, put this stuff back in a water solution first I have no idea what's going to happen here if this doesn't work I've got plenty of white potash that I got from my more conventional ash extractions, and you know what, I'm just going to use that and call this a day. We'll do this one last time, just to see what we get. Because I'm starting to get kind of tired of this stuff, to be perfectly frank. You remember that name of that channel? This is something you really should not try at home. This stuff is not safe. It really isn't. I shouldn't even own it. The fact that I own it is 100% completely and totally a coincidence. Now, unlike the acetone and the ethanol, this stuff is simply not going to mix with the water. They are completely incompatible. What we'll do is just sit here and stir for a bit and see if we can get that brown stuff to go into the chloroform as opposed to into the water. My guess is no. That's the final result of my brown potash work. I did actually manage to get it to dry eventually through a combination of vacuum drying and just baking the shit out of it. Um, the reason why I'm showing it to you here is that I made this potash out of this stuff right here yard trash from this very yard, so this is kind of full circle. Um, I have white pot ash also that I made from the ashes of the grill up here, although I've already mixed it with carbon, so I can't show it to you. So I'm going to be moving on with this pot ash in a different direction. I just wanted to show it to you before I did that. I'm not going to taste it again. I've tasted it multiple times. It still tastes like shit. Um, so that's an episode. 
because this is the this output of this evolution is the input to the next one. So I will go ahead and ask for a like and subscribe if you want. You don't have to. Of course, tell your friends if you want. Again, you don't have to. Get ready for the next episode in the Potash series because people keep asking me what this stuff is for and I have to admit that it's not for anything. I do it just to show that I can do it, but I have decided there's something else I want to do and it does require Potash as the as the input. So let's try that next. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.